Hi there, let me walk you through some of the features of the 3.0 version of the Ruby code editor. I made some changes to the editing um, tool that basically makes code highlighting and all of these kind of things possible. And they gave us some new features. So let me just walk you through the whole thing and then show you the new features. You best install the code editor from my website, alexschreier.net. You can um, download it as an RBZ file or as a zip file. Uh, in installation instructions are, are actually provided on the page as well. So I'm not going to go over that. When it comes in, it comes in under the window menu. And it is an entry called Ruby Code Editor. Once you click it, you get this thing here. And this allows you to edit code, uh, Ruby code, right in SketchUp. Um, and uh, elsewhere, I'm going to give some instructions on how to do that. But for now, let's assume you know what to do with this. <laughs> so the Ruby code editor um, comes with a bunch of tabs. And this is similar to the older version. Ruby code editor, the left tab, is basically the editing environment. Reference browser, the second tab, is the browser environment, where you can go to any kind of reference sites that I have included here. There's the API reference, for example, where you can look up uh, any of SketchUp classes. Then you can look at the core docs if you want to. All of those kind of things, they're all in here. This is uh, an error that unfortunately comes up from the websites and that uh, I can't get rid of. So <laughs> it has to be there. Then under options, there are a bunch of options. And you see here, you can set the font size for the code editor. You can um, indent with tabs or with spaces, uh, indent size, you can set that to your preference. Um, smart indenting is, is language dependent and came through the, um, this environment here. And uh, I don't like it, but if you like it, give it a try. But um, you can uh, turn it on or off. Show line numbers, it's these guys, of course. And the last two options here, always save a backup file which means that every single time you hit save, the old file gets copied into a backup file and the new file is, is basically saved. And then this last thing here was a wish by some users where um, you can make it optional to wrap the entire code in a single undo. What this means is you write some code here and you hit run um, and SketchUp executes the code and when it is wrapped in a single undo, all you need to do is click this undo button to undo it. Um, if you uncheck this option here, then every single step becomes an undo step and you will have to step your way back through those. Um, it's a preference that some people might want. Then under the reference browser, there are some options that are more or less working. This I implemented because some web pages look a little uh, large in a smaller window. So you can zoom it. It doesn't really work because it zooms the whole zooms the whole window here, but um, it's a last uh, resort option. Um, user interface style is kind of neat. You can go with dark, you can go with light. If you like windows, you can go with blue. I kind of like dark. And then now the uh, latest version update uses my um, SketchUp plugins uh, index. So you can very easily click that and find out whether you have the latest version. So that is now very reliable the way that it's set up. And there's a little about that explains some of these features and um, what, what went into this. All right, so in terms of using the editor, <coughs> what you have here are the same buttons as before. There's a new document, which means you clear the editor. You can open a file right there. It's loaded into the editor, that kind of stuff. Um, you always get a nice feedback down here for whatever you do. So that shows up there. You can save. Uh, and again, this will save with a, with a backup. If you forget to add RB at the end, it'll add RB for you, that kind of stuff. Then the next buttons here, Explore Current Selection, means that if you highlight anything in your SketchUp model, and you say Explore Current Selection, it'll tell you some information about that. So first of all, what kind of entity it is. So this is a component instance, for example. Um, the ID, uh, what the definition is called, um, the layer, and so on and so forth. So this is um, useful if you quickly need to check
properties of something before you run a code on something. <laughs> then the next one here uh, lists the object's attributes. And that works when an object has attributes. So in our case here, Susan is a dynamic component. So that does have attributes. So when I click on this, it says there's my component instance again. And attributes um, are organized in attribute dictionaries, which have names, except for this one here, of course. Um, and then have properties. And so then here's the dynamic attributes. And there are the properties. Alrighty. Then you can always show the Rubik console, although that is a little less necessary nowadays because all of the errors are shown right in the results dialog right here. But you can always do that if you want to. And then with this last button here, you can print the code, which means a little window gets opened. Uh, unfortunately, I can't pull it over, but in any case, a uh, window gets opened, you can print it, <coughs> and it's really just a very basic printing function for all of this here. All right, so let's start new. Um, this is the default. We get a bunch of um, handles, basically, for the model, for entities, for the selection. And you can run this, and this will work. <laughs> basically, re returns the selection. Um, some of the extra features that this editing environment gives us is, first of all, highlighting. So as you can see here, SketchUp classes gets highlight, get highlighted, and SketchUp methods get highlighted, and they get highlighted separately. So you can at least immediately know whether they are typed it correctly. Um, then there is now a code completion function in the editor, which you can invoke by just placing a cursor wherever you want to have your code. You hit Control Space which gives you a selection. And this is a bit of a brute force code completion. So it has all the classes and all the methods in there. Um, basic separation is the classes, of course, are capitalized. So the first letter is a capital. And the methods are lowercase. So you can then start typing for SketchUp, for example, S, K, E, and you see already we're getting somewhere. And then I do my dot. And I'm going to do Control shift again. And I can say Active. I can scroll down. There we go. Bingo. So that is another way for you to at least get the spelling correctly on the, on the first try. All right. Maybe at a later point, I'll make that a little more sense, uh, responsive to the methods, you know, where the methods actually get invoked based on the, the context. But for now, this is already a good improvement. Another way to reuse code and quickly get code in there is this insert add cursor um, drop down. So if you need an array loop, just click right there. You get it. You can you get a bare bones array. Now you can have 0 to 10 times do something. And then, I don't know, PI or something. Um, and then you can play. And there we go. It, it does something. So um, you can you can use this to insert Ruby snippets basic Ruby stuff. <clears throat> you can insert a bunch of SketchUp snippets, like the open save dialog and so on. So this is another nice shortcut to do things. Um, in terms of HTML, I really just put a page template in there for um, when you do a web dialog. Nothing too fancy. You can, of course, edit non-Ruby um, in here. And the code highlighter gives you different options here. You can actually turn the whole highlighting off if you like that. Um, you can have HTML on. You can do any of these, JavaScript and so on. And they're responsive to whatever you have in, in this window, of course. Then you see already uh, brackets get highlighted, matching brackets. I notice that's a little buggy when there are a lot of brackets and a bunch of things are nested and there are not enough spaces between uh, around brackets. But um, in most cases, this works really well, actually. Anyways, so that's that. And then when you make an error, there's another improvement that I have now in this 3.0 version is if you have a spelling error like here, first of all, you see that it's not highlighted or not properly co color coded. And then when you hit run, you now get the error right down here. And there's a nice 
feedback so you know okay well that's where my problem was and you can go ahead and fix it um, sometimes you actually get a line number down here as well um, that lets you easier figure out where your error is so you can troubleshoot really nicely right in this code alrighty so let's open a file do something see again if I load a lot of feedback down here this now works on the Mac as well this used to be a little buggy on the Mac Mac well, when I say execute code runs the code and we're good and look at that all of that worked and like I said earlier because everything is wrapped in a single undo I can now undo the whole thing at once and redo and so on so this allows you to very easily do some parametric stuff so I can say change my number to three Ta -da. anyways so you can um, very easily do that but if you want to have single step undo then of course uncheck this guy here so those are most of the functions in the new version everything should be a little more stable because this editing environment has been updated um, significantly and Everything the background of this editor has been updated significantly, so I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if anything doesn't work correctly. Um, if you want to help uh, editing and, and improving this, it's the the whole project is also on GitHub. Um, but other than that, have fun writing your SketchUp code and producing something as as colorful as this. All right.